So the man who actually built the foundation of the entire internet just called AI coding horrible for anything that actually matters. So Linus Trevald, the, whose Linux runs 96% of the servers, every Android phone, and literally powers the cloud, just dropped some brutal truths about AI and how it's powered to code. So while everyone's panicking about AI replacing developers, the guy who's been coding since typing programs for magazines says we're all missing the point. He's getting bombarded with fake AI generated bug reports, watching crawlers destroy his infrastructure, and he's still more worried about Rust in the kernel than ChatGPT. So I'm going to break down today some of Linux's most savage takes on AI and why his boring approach might save us from all of the hype machine. Let's jump into this today. All right, so Linus Traval just gave us a masterclass in cutting through the AI hype. Now, this is the guy who built Linux at 21 and Git because nothing else was good enough. Uh, and it wasn't impressive and he's not impressed by your chat GPT wrapper. So while Silicon Valley is losing their mind over vibe coding, Linus is dealing with actual problems like AI bots hammering his servers and fake security reports. So let's jump into what he's talking about AI and what he said in the past about it. Now, Linus is fairly positive about vibe coding, AI assisted development where you describe what you want. So this is something that Andre Carbathy coined about six months ago where he said you can vibe code things into existence, right? Where you talk to the AI and then it builds out a program for you. But here's the kicker. He says it's great for beginners, but terrible for anything that would ever go into production. He compares it to typing programs from computer magazines in the old days. Educational, but not professional. The maintenance nightmare of AI-generated code makes it, quote, horrible, horrible for real systems. And that's a quote from Travol. So perfect for getting non-programmers to make computers do something they couldn't otherwise. But classic Linus, he's brutally honest about the difference between toys and tools that run in the real world. Now, let's jump into this here because he's not been like this isn't his first time of making a take against AI. He's not really a big fan of AI. So let's take a look at this article here. Linus Serval is okay with vibe coding as long as it's not used for anything that actually matters. The inventor also discusses Rust in the kernel and NVIDIA's proprietary code and the problem with AI crawlers. So Linux and Git inventor Linus Traval discussed AI software in development in an interview earlier this month, describing himself as fairly positive about vibe coding, but as a way into computing, not for production code where it would likely be horrible to maintain. Traval was interviewed, um, and he, he's technical lead of Linux, so he's the one that has to commit all of the, he's the technical lead for all the Linux kernel, and he's been doing it for the last 20 years. He says, I've not even been a programmer. As for Git, which he invented, he said, I really took it from the side. Uh, I really just look at it from the side. So I ask about the process of the Linux kernel development. Travold said, his, Travold said his role has changed. I used to say that my job was often to say no, he said, turning down new ideas that would be hard to maintain. But now he sometimes has to say yes to new things against opposition from longstanding maintainers who kind of get stuck in a rut. He had in mind uh, he had in mind the contentious matter of Rust in the kernel, though he said that there are disagreements in other areas too. Rust is actually becoming a real part of the kernel instead of being this experimental thing, he said, adding that it's take longer than expected. But he also went on to talk about AI, and he says that uh, he, he is troubled with the AI boom, NVIDIA's proprietary GPU microkernel, and CUDA's language is driving the hardware rather than open source Linux. He says there really is no different from user space, said Travold, adding that one of the nice parts of AI is that it made NVIDIA be a good player to the Linux kernel space, famously not true 20 years ago. So one of the things he said very, very nicely about both crypto and AI is that it actually got people like NVIDIA to actually contribute to the kernel because they suddenly cared about getting it to run per, really performant. But he says that the kernel maintainers do suffer bugs and security notices that are made up by people who misuse AI, but that it's not a big problem for his other projects as, such as curl. Tavrald is not using or even playing with AI assisted coding, though he said, I'm sure people are looking at it as even the current for even the kernel code base. But regarding vibe coding, he described himself as fairly positive, but not for kernel development. Computers have become more complicated than, than when he learned to code and was typing in program from computer magazines. Vibe coding, he said, is a great way for people to get computers to do something that maybe they couldn't get it to do otherwise. But he said, ultimately, AI is just another tool the same way compiles for, compilers bring people from writing assembly code by hand and increase productivity enormously, but didn't make programmers go away. He said, Traval is looking forward to a time when AI is less type or more like everyday reality that nobody talks consistent, constantly about. He says, I can almost guarantee you that I that while I read it, I can also guarantee you that it will not answer it. It's very rare that I answer your emails. So he said he reads a lot of the emails, but he actually doesn't really 
um, answer them. Now, Travold's been pretty vocal about AI in the past, and he says the AI crawlers are very disruptive to the kernel.org infrastructure, hammering servers constantly. He says these bots are scraping source code to train models, causing actual operational problems. But he's more concerned about server costs and downtime than AI replacing kernel developers. The irony is AI companies using Linux infrastructure to build tools that stress the Linux infrastructure. So this is the unglamorous reality of AI that nobody's talking about at conferences. While everyone generates, uh, tries to debate about AGI, Linus is dealing with bandwidth bills from ChatGPT training. Now, he says that they're getting flooded with bugs and security notices that are made up by people who misuse AI. People using AI are generating fake vulnerability reports hoping for bug bounties. Now, he says it's not as bad as other projects like Curl, who is getting bombarded constantly, but it's still wasting a ton of the maintainer's time. So AI hallucination creates fic fictitional security issues that then cause investigation that ends up being a waste of time. So the human cost of verifying these fake reports slows down security work. Now, one quick favor that I have to ask of you, if you could take a minute and make sure you leave a comment, let me know what your thought is. Do you think AI will take over and eventually even become to help with the Linux kernel? Curious to hear your guys' thoughts. I'm not net, I'm not anti-AI, right? You see back behind me over here, see these servers over here, these are starting to build and run and train various of our AI projects that we're working on. And we're gonna be revealing these projects here soon, but like these are real AI systems. These are not just ch chat GPT wrappers, nor are they things that are trying to, you know, scrape the Linux kernel to uh, create bug bounties. Now the creator of Linux and Git isn't using Copilot, ChatGPT, or any of the AI coding assistants. He says, quote, I'm sure people are looking at it for even the co co kernel code base, but not him. For almost 20 years, he hasn't been actively programming. He reviews and manages the code base. His job is saying no to bad ideas and yes to contentious good ones like Rust. So he doesn't need AI to help write code because he's not writing any anyway. The ultimate flex is being so good at system design that coding becomes optional. Now, he says everyone's freaking out about NVIDIA's proprietary CUDA controlling AI development. But Linus shrugs. He says that's really no different from user space. Proprietary software exists. So the twist here is that AI actually made NVIDIA become a good Linux kernel player. So 20 years ago, NVIDIA was hostile to Linux. Now they contribute properly. Sometimes propri proprietary dominance forces companies to play nice with open source. <clears throat> now, Linus is always the pragmatic, right? If it makes Linux better, he doesn't really care about the ideology pur purity. So he, he says, boring to me is no super exciting new features that will break machines for millions. So while everyone chases the next shiny AI features, Linus wants stability. Linux runs critical infrastructures, hospitals, banks, satellites, and they don't need exciting. This philosophy is why Linux succeeded when flasher projects failed. AI hype is the opposite of boring. It promises everything, breaks constantly, and is never reliable. So the contrast between AI marketing and kernel development couldn't be more different. Now, he's, uh, he's excited about a lot of other different things. He said, I can almost guarantee you that if you send him an email, he'll read it, but he will not answer it. So he gets countless emails about AI features and complaints, and he reads them all, but he responds to almost none of them. So this filtering mechanism keeps him focused on what actually matches. And what actually matter, matters. So imagine if every AI hipster had this discipline about responding to the trends. The power of saying nothing when everyone expects your hot take is huge. Now, in the past, he's definitely said some things. He says that AI is basically autocorrect on steroids. And he's made other comments about AI where he says, let's wait and see it for five or 10 years. And I'm in the same boat, right? Let's wait and see for five years and see what it gets to. So he's looking forward to an AI is less hyped and more like everyday reality and I'm in the same boat. He wants it to become infrastructure that nobody talks about, like compilers say. You don't hear people talking about the latest compiler, right? But that's what he's talking about. He wants AI to become that much of the routine place. So the sign of mature technology is when it becomes invisible and just works. So remember when cloud computing was revolutionary? Now it's just computing and running a server. Somebody doesn't say, well, where's your server? Like, it's just kind of given that it's in the cloud. Uh, now, AI will succeed when we stop having AI conferences and when we just use it. And that's what Traval said. So this boring future is way more valuable than today's hype cycle. Now, if your company has systems that aren't connected and you need some help, make sure you reach out to us because here at Startup Hack, our specialty is connecting systems. So check out StartupHack.com because we'd love to help out your company. Now, there's a clear, clear distinction here. 
AI is great for experimentation and vibe coding is great for experimentation and prototypes, but it's terrible for production. Maintenance in, is everything in real systems. And he says AI code is unmaintainable chaos. The kernel has code from 1991 that still runs perfectly. Now try getting that from chat GPT output. Vibe coding might get you a working prototype, but it's not a system for millions of people. The gap between it works on my machines and it works for humanity is massive. So after 25 years in software, I know maintenance costs dwarf developer costs. So overall, the complexity problem AI can actually solve, right, is what we want to be looking for. Computers have become too complicated for beginners compared to the magazine days. AI could be the bridging to letting non-programmers start to work on computers a little bit more and to be able to learn more quickly. Here at Startup Hack, we're definitely using AI to help teach some of our junior developers, but they learn how to use AI as a tool, not as a crutch. So we don't want to be replacing developers. We want to be able to expand what they can do. So this is exactly like Excel, let accountants become programmers without even knowing it. The democratization of coding might actually help com contribute to how many more programmers we get. So instead of fewer programmers, we will get a million more casual coders. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but we've got to continue to be able to learn to build on the systems. Now, I'm curious to hear you guys' thoughts. Do you agree with Linus? Do you disagree? What are you guys' thoughts? Make sure you leave a comment down below and make sure you like and subscribe. Here at Startup Pack, we love to build custom software solutions for companies, and here's some great information about our services. Hi, I'm Spencer, a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and 25 years in software development, I've transformed technology teams and products for businesses just like yours. As you are fractional CTO, you get the strategic guidance of a seasoned technology executive without the full-time commitment, perfect for companies ready to leverage cutting-edge technology without expanding headcount. My team at Startup Hack has already built advanced AI agents for small and medium businesses, automating complex workflows, and delivering advanced ROI to human workflows. We specialize in creating custom software that connects your systems into a single coherent technology ecosystem. Our development approach focuses on tangible business outcomes. For one client, we developed AI-powered workflows that cut days off of human processes. For another company, by connecting multiple systems, we reduce processing time to increase their ROI by over 75%. We don't just write code, we architect solutions that scale. Whether you need cloud system architecture, data integration between legacy systems or custom AI agents that automate your unique business processes, my team delivers results that exceed your expectations. Having led technology for a lot of companies and launched seven successful brands of my own, I bring battle-tested expertise to your business challenges. Our specialty is turning technological complexity into business advantage. So if you're ready to harness the power of AI and custom software to drive your business forward, let's connect. Together, we'll build technology that doesn't just solve today's problems, it positions you for tomorrow's opportunities. Technology leadership, decades of experience, AI powered. Reach out today and we can help you. Check out startuppack.com slash Spencer.